today we're going to start discussing what's known as an ICF table. I stands for initial, C stands for change, and F stands for final. The purpose of an ICF table is to provide us with a more concise, straightforward way to account for everything that's going on when we're considering reaction stoichiometry. So typically with the problems you've been doing, if they ask you questions like how much of the excess reagent is left over after the reaction is complete, that involves a lot of lines and then you got to do that subtraction step. The ICF table will basically answer questions about every single reactant and every single product all at once. Let me show you how it works. So the first thing to make note of, is super, super important, is that when you're doing your ICF tables, all of the values that you enter into your table need to be in moles. It's not acceptable to use grams or any other kind of unit. You're gonna have to change everything over to moles when you start putting it into the table. Here, and this is how you start the problem out, write out your balanced equation nice and neat. It's almost like you're setting up an Excel spreadsheet with columns. And so each reagent is a column, each product is a column, and then for the I, the C, and the F, you could think of those as rows. So keep it nice and organized, like in a spreadsheet of sorts. They did, in this problem, they did tell us how many moles of sodium hydroxide they have. So I can enter that value, and that's initially, before we started the reaction, we had 2.78 moles of sodium hydroxide. For the carbon disulfide, it's a liquid, and they gave us a volume and a density. So I cannot plug either one of these values into here. I need to get it turned into moles. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll start with the 92.5 mils. And I'm just going to use my density as a conversion factor here. So I'll say one mil of the carbon disulfide has 1.26 grams. And then from there, we can use our molar mass. So there are 76.13 grams of carbon disulfide in one mole of the carbon disulfide. So units will cancel. Mills will cancel with mills, grams with grams leaving us with moles of that other reagent. I got, I rounded a tiny bit. I know we're supposed to keep all the digits, but then I start running out of room in my table. So since all the values that they give us have three sig figs, the rule of thumb or what I would recommend, keep a couple extra digits. So I decided to kind of cut off my number after five sig figs because I know at the end of the day I need three sig figs so keeping it up a couple extra it should work out okay so that value is for carbon disulfide so I'm going to put it in the initial spot for my carbon disulfide let's think about over here so initially before the reaction begins we don't have any product I mean that's usually the point of the reaction to make product. So over here, we're going to have zeros. We're going to have um, zero moles, zero moles, and zero moles of all three products. And I wrote moles here. As long as you're remembering to use moles, you don't have to keep on writing moles. Um, the change line. So as you know from working other stoichiometry problems, the amount of reactant that gets used up or the amount of product that gets formed is dictated by the stoichiometry, the, the coefficients of our balanced equation. So we would expect the carbon disulfide to get used up. And I'm gonna use, I'm gonna grab the three and I'm gonna say, well, it's gonna get used up 
at a ratio of minus 3x. Minus, because it's getting used up, the 3 from the coefficient of the balanced equation, and x because I, I don't know what that is quite yet. Same thing over here. Uh, the sodium hydroxide is getting used up because it's a reactant. So I'm going to do minus, I'm going to grab that 6, and I'm going to put an x. Products will start forming, right, as the reaction continues. So we're going to do pluses over here to represent the formation of product. You're still going to grab your coefficient, so this will be plus 2x. Coefficient is understood there to be 1. So you can do plus 1x or just plus x, and then I have another 3. Now that we've gotten the first two lines of the ICF table filled out, our next task is to figure out which of the reagents is the limiting reactant. The way you do that is by combining the I and the C lines and setting them equal to zero. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna grab the 1.5309 value I'm going to subtract 3x and set that equal to 0. We're going to do the same thing with the other reagent. If there was three reagents, you would do it for all three reagents. So 2.78 minus 6x equals 0. Now think of it as two separate algebra problems. You're going to solve for x on both of these equations. So I'm going to bring over the 3x. I have 1.5309 equals 3x. And I'll divide both sides by 3. So for this reagent, x is equal to 0 0.5103. And then same thing over here. I'm going to bring over the 6x and divide both sides by 6 and I get x equals 0 0.46333 three. All right, you can keep some extra digits the number that you want to go with is going to be your smallest x value so I want to keep since 0.4633 is smaller then 0 0.5103. This is the x value that I'm going to use to solve my ice table. This value, the larger value, is gibberish. So we're going to cross out that larger x value. The one piece of information, though, that can be garnered from the larger x value is the identity of the excess reagent. So since these values were associated with carbon disulfide, I know that this is my excess reactant, and since this was the smaller x value, this is going to be my limiting reactant. But this is the x value I'm going to want to use. So our next step then is to plug in this x value into all of these columns and solve for the final number of moles. Let me show you what that looks like for the carbon disulfide. So we're going to kind of use the same algebraic equation that we just did. 1.5309. And it's minus 3x. But instead of just leaving it as x, plug in the smaller of the two x values. So I'm going to do minus 3 times 0 0.4633. And when I do that, I get 0 0.141. Well, everything in here has units of moles. So this is 0 0.141 moles. And I can, I need to put that value in the final line. That tells us how many moles of carbon disulfide are left over after the reaction is complete. 
Do the same thing here. We're going to do 2.78 minus 6 times this value. When I did that, I got something, because of the rounding, something like, like this, 0.002. Okay. At the end of the day, this is 0. I'll just erase that too. It's because I rounded a tiny bit, but if you go back and check it with the full number, you're going to get a 0. You should always get a 0 with your limiting reactant in the final line, because that's the definition of a limiting reactant. A limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out. We're not going to have any of that left over. But this is the amount of carbon disulfide that we have left over. Sodium hydroxide is completely gone. Now if I do 2 times 0.4633, and I have a 0, so there's nothing up here, so it's just 2 times x, I get 0 0.9266 moles. And that's going to be the moles of the product here. Same thing, x, just x, so 0 0.4633. And then we have 3x for the water, which gives us 1.3899 moles of water. Every value in this table is moles, even if I didn't write it in. Now we can use the mole values in our F line to solve the questions that were asked of us in the problem. First question, how many grams of Na2CS3 were produced? You're going to want to grab the mole value, 0 0.9266. And we're going to use that with the molar mass. One mole of that has 154.17 grams. After we plug those values in our calculator, and I'm going to go with three sig figs because most of the de values, the density, the volume, the moles, they all had three sig figs. So I got 143 grams. of Na2CS3 produced. Other questions we were asked. We were asked how many moles of water were produced. That one's a little bit easier because we already have that answer here. So at the end of the day, we had 1.39 moles of water. And the third question the perpetual, how many grams of the excess reactant are left over after the reaction is complete? So we're going to want to grab, again, grab the mole value in the F line for our excess reactant. And we're going to use the molar mass of the carbon disulfide. And that gives us 10.7 grams of carbon disulfide left over. Super handy. In my opinion, this approach is a lot less work. You can go back and you can resolve any of the previous stoichiometry problems using this approach.